Now the third concept, which is by far the most difficult, and one which I doubt I will help completely clarify, but I will do my best, it is the question of what it means to be the homeland of the Jewish people. What does it mean to be the Jewish state, or the state of the Jewish people? This is a concept that almost everyone gets wrong and leads to complete misunderstandings about what Israel is. The reason is that many people who try to understand it uh, use their own experiences, typically from North America, regarding the separation of religion and state. Uh, often unaware that the whole notion of what it means to separate religion and state developed over 2,000 years of bloody slaughters and battles between Pope and Caesar, princes and church, and even today, still a hotly contested and issue that has to be worked on and figured out. So what I will ask of you is to try to understand Israel and Judaism on their own terms. Not in the terms of the Christian Roman empires, but on, their own, on its own terms, which has to do with the development of Judaism itself. And what are these terms? Judaism, for centuries, was essentially one thing. People belonged to a tribe, to a people, to an ethnicity. They shared the covenant with God, practiced religious duties, they, built, they had the same culture, the same history. Essentially, if you were Jewish, it was a full package. And then comes enlightenment, comes modernity, and this package is basically blown apart. And, and you begin to have all kinds of Jewish identities. I will use myself as an example, as one kind, perhaps on one end of the spectrum. Uh, I am very much a devout atheist. Now, many people, upon hearing that I'm a Jewish atheist, find this deeply jarring, uh, especially if you happen to come from, let's say, the United States, where Judaism is practiced essentially as a faith and as a religion. But here in Israel, I am far from being rare. There's quite uh, a few of us. Now, this is something that people who conceive Judaism as a religion only or primarily find they're not able to process it. I, I had a meeting once with a German parliamentarian when I told him that I'm an atheist. He said, in which case you're not Jewish. And I had to argue with him. And it, it was weird because he kept on insisting that I just can't be Jewish. And I insisted that I very much am. I just don't practice religious duties and I don't believe in God. But I am very much of the Jewish people and spent much of my time, most of my schedule, if you look at my calendar, is devoted to the Jewish nation and the Jewish people. So one thing that happened with enlightenment, the beginning of secularism, of modernity, of the idea of national identities, is that for example, this Zionism emphasized the national, secular uh, identity of the Jewish people. Then on the other end, again, very extreme, but serves to make a point. I bet that you've often wondered, how come that religious Jews appear in like anti-Israel, anti-Holocaust denial rallies run by the former president of the land? They come, again, from an extreme branch, but it makes the point, of anti-Zionist Jews. Now, when Zionism began as a movement, religious Jews, especially very religious Jews, viewed it as a heretical movement because it was secular, and it came with a very secular, enlightenment-based idea that the Jewish people should not wait for the Messiah to shape their faith and to take them back to their promised land. They should do it on their own. They should take faith into their own hands, they should shape their future, and they should, through their own will, establish a state. 
So for very religious Jews, this was considered a heretical idea. And some of them went to the extreme of becoming an active anti-Zionist, believing that Zionism and the establishment of the state of Israel is actually interfering with God's will. A lot of religious Jews over time actually accepted Zionism as uh, the realization of God's will. Uh, they looked at people like me, secular atheists, and said, okay, she might be secular, but in her actions, in building the state, she is carrying out God's will, uh, regardless of whether she believes in God or not. So, ever since Enlightenment and Modernity, Judaism developed a whole spectrum of identities that combine the elements of Judaism before, but each person combines them differently. Some people will combine more the culture and the history and the nationhood and the peoplehood, someone like me. Some, for some it will be more the religious duties, the covenant with God, uh, but we're all Jews. So the state of Israel is the secular national expression of Judaism. And yet, in being the national expression of Judaism, it has also taken care to make sure that various forms of religious expression of Judaism are possible in the state, as well, of course, as religious expressions of Islam and Christianity. But in, per in terms of the conception, Regardless of what kind of Jew you are, Israel has made itself a place that can be your home. So, perhaps a metaphor to understand Judaism and what it means to be the Jewish state is to think of Judaism as a diamond with many facets. Culture, history, nationhood, peoplehood, religion, covenant, ethnicity, pride, and which facet gets highlighted depends on the environment, which depends on the person, but it is not a single thing. I will just end this concept and framework by saying that the question of what it means to be the Jewish state, the question of what it means to be the state of the Jews, is something that we negotiate daily in Israel still today. It's not a simple concept. Every day we try to figure it out. And there's not a day that goes by that you will not find a headline in the paper that reflects the ongoing battle within Israeli society to figure out what exactly it means to be the homeland of the Jewish people. Where exactly do you run the lines? Because even though I charted to you a difference between the secular Judaism and the religious, it's not so easy to chart a clear line. Because if I celebrate Passover, I don't celebrate it as a religious holiday. I think of it as a national cultural holiday. If the national calendar of Israel is the Jewish calendar, that is a historical cultural element and perhaps not a religious one. So it's not easy to just separate and say, okay, Passover Seder is religious or Passover Seder is national. Jewish calendar religious, Jewish calendar secular, uh, national, cultural. And this is why every day as a people and as citizens of Israel, we seek to negotiate what this means.